welcome back. This is Steve, Oscar Hotel 3, Sierra Papa November, and this is my stealth antenna. Now, I wanted a, a second antenna because of the noise problems I'm receiving, but I didn't want an eyesore. So I thought, well, have a look. Can you see the antenna, first of all? What this actually is, is a dipole that's folded. You can see one element there, but if we follow the coax in, you can see the coax coming in over the drain pipe. The coax goes down to the center of the structure and then out across this beam to a center point without ballon for testing here, which is a sugar block or a terminal block, whatever you want to call it. We then have the two elements for 20 meters one that comes down this side and is folded back down the side of the structure and supported with a bit of string at the end. And the same on the other side here. Both these elements are the same length. So it's a 20 meter dipole, 10 meters total length, and that takes up this entire structure. But it is horizontally polarized, not vertical. And that's just a nice shot looking out over the, the field. Now, my initial thoughts of this, well, I had several thoughts, but the simple thing is to, to do what I've just shown you with the dipole. And if I go back to my very basic drawing skills, here we can see the outline of the structure. And if we add the coax that I've, I've already shown you in the video there, we end up with this. And adding the dipole elements it looks like this. This works very well for a single band. Now we can add additional elements and turn this into a fan dipole, which would look like this. Here we have the, the main elements are red and the secondary elements, which are from the same feed point, are blue. This is my idea. We need to test the noise levels to check how good this is. I mean, it is a stealth antenna. It is close to the house, which may be a little bit noisy, but hopefully not as noisy as the QRM I'm getting from my neighbor, hee <laughs> hee. But we're not just talking about dipoles. I was considering other things as well. Um, in fact, let's stick with dipoles for now. If we go on to the next image, we have the same dipole layout but this time it's a mixture of horizontal and vertically polarized. Now, having it so close to the ground is not ideal, but if you think about the high current sections, they're closer to the feed point. The, the high voltage sections are closer to the ground. So in terms of radiation, we'll still have most of the useful RF coming out on the higher section of this. And whilst we're on that subject, we could going back to the fan dipole idea, we could add additional elements and we could have some horizontally polarized and some vertically polarized, which would look kind of like this. A little bit strange, but another option. But let's forget about dipoles for now and think about what other options we have. If we go back to the basic outline of the structure, and I take the feed line, the coaxial feed line down to the ground and run it to this corner, we could then have a full wave loop depending on the size of the structure. Now this structure is too small really for anything. It might work on 10 meters, but I, I think much smaller than that. Uh, the sides are about two and a half meters high and it's probably about three meters in width. So two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, we could probably get a 10 meter loop in there. But it wouldn't be useful on any, anything apart from 10. Possibly six. You could probably tune it on four, but it's not particularly the, the HF bands that I'm interested in, in operating. But we could increase the size. We could take that loop and we could do this and we could use the whole structure. The element is then close to the house, which would probably increase noise. But it's it's something we could try. Measure that. It, I could probably get a 15 meter loop, maybe a 12 meter loop in. Uh, no, sorry, wrong way. 15, <laughs> possibly a 17 meter loop. 
But what other options do we have? Perhaps, perhaps we could turn it into a terminated loop, which would give us a flat SWR across most of HF. Again, it really needs to be full wave on the, the lowest band we want to operate. But if we put in uh, a nine to one ballon, which in this image is the yellow dot or the yellow box, and then we put a, is it 300 ohm, 400 ohm terminating resistor, which is the red box in this diagram. Uh, we add some radials, which are the gray lines, which should probably be a quarter wave, quarter wave each on the lowest band of operation. Although if they're buried, maybe we could get away with 0.1 wavelength each if there's enough of them. So this, this would be a great multi-band stealth antenna the only problem is it's a little bit lossy depending on band because of that terminating resistor which basically eats up any what would be reflected power is eaten up by this terminating resistor and of course it presents a flat swr on transmit but it's non-resonant on receive so as a receive antenna you'll be considerably down apart from the bands that it's cut for. So say this was, if that's 20 metres, say we could get this, you wouldn't get to 40 metres, say maybe it's 30 metre loop in total. 30 metre loop which terminated, it would be very effective on 30. On 20 it would become lossy, 17 it would become even lossier and so on. But it would be interesting to model this, actually, and actually work out how, how efficient it would be on the higher bands. But back to my dipole idea. I'm always a fan of dipoles because they're efficient, they're resonant, they don't require an ATU, and they just work. And they're balanced, so they are inherently low noise. So looking down on this structure, if you remember from the video, there's actually like a, a lattice or supports across the top which looks like this and the current dipole looks like this with the blue line elements so we could add additional elements like a fan dipole coming from the same feed point and run them down the individual beams or something else maybe to think about is this where we either run from the send from the feed element outwards to the edges. I'm thinking now whether we could bond that because if all these joints were soldered, it would make like a cobweb type pattern, but only the resonant element lengths would would well be resonant. So I'm wondering what we could do. It would be interesting to model this as well. But yeah, there's, there's several things we can do here and I'm talking and I'm thinking and I'm getting ideas. So I apologize. But yes, that is, this is my stealth antenna. But how does it perform? First of all, on receive, I have a video here switching between the first antenna, which is the, the main trap dipole, which is away from the house, uh, is a fantastic operator, or fantastic performing antenna, very low noise, apart from the QRM from the neighbors. So I think the first video here is showing the QRM from the main antenna, and then switching to the secondary antenna. And you can see the difference in noise levels with the QRM, QRM present. But then the QRM stops and then it's a more interesting comparison because we have the, the, the long trap dipole, which is very, very low noise, as you can see, versus the stealth antenna, which is low noise, but not as low noise because it's closer to the house. But the signals are fairly comparable. The, the actual wanted signals are comparable, but the noise floor on the stealth antenna is slightly higher. I think we can see about, well, when I switch over to the ICOM 7300 later uh, with, with no attenuation and RF gain on normal is about S1, S2 noise on the stealth antenna and nothing reading on the, the main dipole. 
So it's, it's interesting. And a, a, a TX test, I have some audio here, but the, the 20 meter band was not very helpful when I ran this test. But I can switch between both antennas and you can hear there's there's really no audible difference on receive at all. And the signal meter on Hat Green was, was showing the same. So be, both these antennas from a TX perspective are equal. The stealth antenna is just a little bit noisier on receive. Calling CQ Delta X-ray, beaming Pacific. I'm Papa Delta Nine Delta X-ray. Uh, Papa Delta Nine Delta X-ray, beaming Pacific. I'm standing by. Uh, Delta Uniform, Delta Uniform, make your call. And a quick additional note here, you can see that the signal level stays fairly consistent. It's the noise floor that changes when switching between antennas. So if you have a structure, perhaps away from the house, uh, a garden shed or a, 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 a garage or something in the garden, if you can get it away and you can use the structure to form some sort of antenna, then using a, a dipole or a, a fan dipole, you can have a very effective multiband antenna. And don't worry about the height. The fact that it's a low structure is not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, there's a lot of myths about low antennas being cloud warmers and ineffective, but I, I have not found this myself. There, there is some truth in it, but not as much as one might think if you believe some of the things you hear online or on the air. Uh, I do have a video where I've modelled uh, a low height antenna compared to a higher antenna and a vertical antenna. So I'll put a link to that in here. But I'm hoping this has been helpful. I'm hoping that my quick experimentation today has perhaps given you some ideas, not only on a secondary antenna, if you need to get something away from a noise source like I do, but also if you live in an area where you can't have an antenna and you need to do something stealthy to try and hide it from view. So I hope that's helpful. Thank you for listening and I look forward to whatever my next video may be. Leave a suggestion, leave a comment. I would really love to hear from you. This is Oscar Hotel 3, Sierra Papa November, 73s for now.